you and I both have had unorthodox ways of getting our jobs and people love to hear a good job journey. So many times when we're scrolling through social media and LinkedIn, we see everyone post their job announcements and it's just the excitement. And it's like, but so much more went into it. It's so much more than the headline. And it's so much more relatable when you share that. I started looking for jobs in October. My contract wasn't up until May of 2021. And, you know, we were still in a pandemic. I was worried about the impacts that might have on the job search and felt like, you know, when you're six months out, you're fair game. And I took a little bit of a stretch in that and started a little <laughs> sooner. And it took a while. We spent so much time as well going through my reel, remaking it, waking up early. You know, I got one of those accounts with tvjobs.com and I would just refresh every day going through and finding it. I would get on LinkedIn. I would connect and message with every manager and reporter and anchor that I could find at a station and I would follow up. I literally had a notes list on my computer where it was like different stages of follow-ups with different stations. And, you know, I'd send that bold email of saying your future employee, Malik Rankin. And actually my news director here, she got two or three of those emails for me. She never replied to them. But when I talked with her on my first day, she was like, you know, your name just kept coming up. I saw your emails. You were really bold. I saw the tenacity. And then when my EP mentioned you, I was like, all right, I got to sit down and take a look at this reel. It takes several touch points. Many people would be like, well, I don't want to be annoying. I don't want to be a pest. Um, the world isn't going to hand you anything. I will fight for this job the same way that I fight for these stories. So if you want someone that's persistent and aggressive and professional, here I am in your inbox once again. <laughs> we do it every day. We think nothing of it, but why do we not do it with the news director? And so I love that you did that. Were you nervous? I was. I think the first time that I sent an email, because I sent dozens of emails that was that said, Malik Rankin, your future employee. The first time I did, I stared at it. I let it sit in my drafts for a couple of days. Like I sweated over it because it's bold to claim something for yourself. And I think the scary part is admitting and accepting it yourself not even putting it out there for another person. So it was intimidating, but also too, it's eye catching. It's like, it's scary to me, but it's like scary in a good way. And you know, people always say nothing, you've got to be a little afraid and get out of your comfort zone for things to happen. And I think that that played a role here in this, like you got to push the bounds a little bit. Working hard got me far, working hard plus believing that I had every right to be there. And of course this next thing would come through, changed the game for me. Life is not like this. No. It goes, do, 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 do. No, and the way all of this lined up was when I get to tell the story now, it sounds like great and amazing, but really it could have gone a different direction yeah. so easily because when we were in May and my work contract, I was on a one month extension. So my contract was up on June 2nd and I was in final interviews for other jobs. One of which was in Tampa at a station that I'm now competing with. And I was told I was a final candidate and I kept following up, trying to get more information. And while I was on the phone call with that job recruiter, I had my laptop in front of me and was refreshing my email. While I'm on the phone with this recruiter, he tells me they went with the other candidate. My email refreshes in front of me and the other job that I was a contender for lets me know that they're not following through or pursuing me any further for that role. So I'm on the phone with this recruiter and I'm like, all right, Malik, you cannot cry on the phone right now. Like that is a blow to my ego, to my pride, to my self-confidence. And when it happens so quickly like that, you know, you don't even have time to really just let it all soak in. So, you know, I bail out of that call as quick as I can. And I was super upset. You know, I'm like, my contract's up in a few weeks and I don't know what I'm going to do now because my station already hired my replacement. You have to decide your worth for yourself mm -hmm. and you have to stand by that. And you have to tell yourself and believe that what other people say does not determine how I view my worth for me. And at my previous station, I told my old GM, in a face-to-face -face conversation when we were talking about this, you know, 
I know my worth and what you're offering me would be a contract that I would intend on breaking, which is not something I'm interested in doing. And those are tough conversations. But, you know, after I had those two rejections, I posted my stuff on LinkedIn. I made my reel again. I tried to put out as much content as I could and keep everything as updated and relevant as I could and got a message, an email from the senior EP at 10 Tampa Bay. And within two weeks, I got the offer. So on June 2nd was my last day in Birmingham. And on June 3rd, I got a job offer for Tampa. Like I, you can't make it up. And you also were letting go of your apartment at the time. Yep. I moved in with a coworker. I literally, yeah, I was living with a coworker. I sold all of my stuff and I was just like, you know, sometimes you just, you just got to let go and let things come together like they're supposed to. What advice would you give to the person who's watching this right now, who is down in the dumps? Who's like, nobody wants me. I didn't get that job. I don't know what to do. I would say it's terrifying to believe in yourself. It truly mm -hmm. is to step into who you are and your confidence and all that you can accomplish because it is really empowering when you do, but getting to that point, it's still is scary. And I doubted myself so many times. I wondered, I was like, what if I don't get a job? What if I just made a mistake? What if I get out of this industry and then never get back in? You know, there are those moments, but I think for people that are going through this journey, let yourself have that time to be upset. There's absolutely nothing wrong with processing what you're going through if you're dealing with a rejection, but give yourself a cutoff and then Think about the times that you spend upset or complaining or feeling any negative type of way about your current situation and turn all of that into motivation and time and energy into getting yourself to where you want to be. Everybody complains about, I don't get enough feedback at my station. There are ways to get feedback outside of that building. And whether it's joining a membership and having really honed in one-on-one -on -one time or talking with you know leaders in our industry, or it could just be reaching out to reporters in higher markets or anchors at your own station. You know, there's so many other ways. And I feel like if you want to be the best version of yourself, you got to act like it. People just think that, you know, the opportunities will come to you, but in this industry and in the higher and further along you get in your career, you have to fight so hard for it. And making an investment in yourself pays off tenfold. I mean, I truly, truly feel like a large part of why I'm at this job now, was because I signed up for your digital course that led to oh your gosh. online membership, which led to this conversation right here and now. I mean, truly. The second I found out you got that job, I started crying. I was like, Aah. oh my gosh, I was <laughs> ugly crying all that day because I mean, literally I was unemployed for a whole 12 hours, maybe. I was just wow. in shock. So it was, it was pretty cool how everything timed out. It was incredible, the fact that you left your job, that you left your apartment, that you sold your stuff. I mean, yeah. bet on you, always bet on you.